Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. Hello there, everyone. Welcome to the Phantom Zone Radio Show. Oh, yeah. Hey, everybody. Thank you all for being here. And uh, we have the lovely Wicked J. Faye in the chat room waiting to keep you all entertained throughout the show. And, uh, well, I'm from the East Coast originally, and as is our guest for the evening, we are super thrilled to have with us Miss Marilyn Gigliotti. Hey, Marilyn. Hey, how are you guys? Pretty good. How are you? I'm good. Crazy busy day. Oh, I'm sure. And it was I'm a crazy sure. busy week as well. <laughs> That's wonderful, though. We're so glad that uh, you're crazy busy. And thanks for uh, taking the time out to uh, be here with us tonight. It's my yeah. pleasure. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. Oh, of course, of course. How was your uh, Slurpee? I heard you got a Slurpee before <laughs> <laughs> to prepare for it's, the madness. It's good, but it's nearing the end of the 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 um cup, so Aww. you know, not much longer. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. I know. I hate when that happens. We, we're like yeah. kind of slurpy whores, though. Like we love the crap out of slurpees. It's kind of bad. Uh, I, you know, it's like when it gets really hot out here in LA, it's just the only thing that's just going to do it. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. I'm a cook person. What are you? Um, you know, we're we're kind of the suicide slurpy people. We kind of mix the flavors together. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. Usually, just the the cherry and the the blue. What's the blue one? What is oh, that? I don't know. It blue. depends. Blue raspberry it's something. Blue. It depends because <laughs> each each Seven Eleven has different flavors. You know, so it's like yeah. a little. You no, know, the Coke. I like the soda ones though. I do like the soda flavors. Those are cool. Like when they have like the Coke or Mountain Dew or something crazy. But yay! Well, we're happy that you enjoyed your Slurpee in, in the hot LA heat. Oh, my goodness. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, thanks for uh, being with us. And yeah. let's see, uh, there's so much we want to know. I guess we should start at the beginning. Uh, tell okay. us a, a bit about your childhood and some of your early influences. Um, Gosh, let's see. Well, um, born in New York, raised most of my life in New Jersey. Both my parents Woo. are from Puerto Rico. Woo. Yeah. Um. <laughs> But it's I don't know. Growing up, um, I you know I started off as as uh, very very shy. So I think if you ask most people who knew me then, if I would ever be in the entertainment business, they'd be like, no way. Wow. Um, I I didn't even talk when I was in kindergarten or uh, yeah kindergarten. Wow. Um, I I'd have to say that that was probably my first experience as far as being in front of the crowd and getting some kind of recognition because I wouldn't, t- the teacher would line us up against uh, the closet so that we can count off and that's how she did attendance. And um, everybody had an assigned number. And so whenever it came to my number, I would not say a thing. I was too shy. Oh. I wouldn't say um, Do you so remember what, what your day, number was? I don't. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but one day the teacher kind of took me aside and she says, it's like, you know, you really have to talk in school. It's like, how about if I come to your home, you can show me around or whatever, and and will you talk for me the next day in school? So I was like, okay. So she came over to my house. I was so excited. And most people would probably think that you're, they're in trouble um, when the teacher comes to the house. But yeah, I was excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, she couldn't quite, um, she was quite surprised that I was the same child because I was so excited that I was kind of showing her around and she's like, this is not the same person that's in school. Aww. <laughs> I, I was, you know, just showing her things. I was talkative. I was kind of, you know, a little hyper as most five-year-olds are. <laughs> sure. Um and so the next day when I went into school, we lined up and everybody's saying their numbers. I'm, I'm sure I had to have one of the low numbers because um, I'm not remembering for sure, but I think it was by height. And okay. We, we all know that I'm not very tall. Aww, so she she it's always been the case. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, once I got to my number, I said my number and everybody's jaws just dropped. Wow. And so I, I think it kind of left an impression on me because it's something that I really remember. Right. Um, and, you know, it's even though it wasn't a stage, 
I think in some degree it gives the same feeling of the stage. Right, right. And how neat of your but, teacher to you know to go out of her way like that to uh, yeah, you know reach out yeah. to you and kind of literally bring you out of your shell and be like, okay, girl, like uh-huh. look, you, you gotta you gotta you know take part in this. <laughs> and my teacher. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's like very few teachers that are out there like that right now, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because I mean, what what a good lesson too, because it's like you've got to be a part of life. You can't hide who you are. Right. You know, that's that's really cool. Yeah, and so oh. and now I can't remember the teacher's name, but she did leave an impression. <laughs> wow, wow, that's great. Um, yeah, and then the, for me too, um, I was always drawn to musicals on TV. Um, I always wanted to dance the ballet and all that kind of stuff. But uh-huh. growing up, and this is nothing against my parents or anything like that, but growing up, it was you know food on the table, clothes on your back, a roof over your head. So exactly. That was it. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, um, I had to wait until I was in my 20s before I can actually go to a dance class. Right. <laughs> but but, it, but I always seemed to be of the creative mind because um, I would also like to draw. Um, but, you know, it was never, it was never, um, what's the word, you know, it, when it's emb- embraced by the parents and, and they kind of, oh, this is good, you should do more or anything like that. Right, um, right, right. So, you know, but, and and I didn't know that you can actually make a living off of that, even though it's something that you're watching on TV, because, you know, like I said, liking the musical TV shows and, and watching people do this, I, it's not something that I comprehended to know that I can actually make a career out of that. Right, right. So, but, um, it, yeah, it wasn't until I grew up, um, I, I went to quite a few different schools, um, and uh, growing up, once I was actually on my own, that after doing the whole uh, nine to five office jobs, and but then I kind of went into hair and makeup, um, right. working in a salon, so that kind of let some of my creative juices out, um, and then uh, then I found my way to the theater and all that. Yeah, I mean, what um, what got you interested in that particular field of like cosmetology? Like, how did you how did you segue into that? Um, well, when I was in high school, um, I they actually offered it in the high school that I was going to in Sarah oh, wow. High School, by the way. Okay. Um, and uh, but uh, um, biology was one of the classes that needed to be taken and. Frankly, I just didn't want to dissect a frog so that I can learn how to do hair and makeup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the reason it, it was a requirement, though, is because we needed to learn the bones and the muscles and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Because, it's, yeah, you know, we, we deal with the skin and the bones and the hair, the head structure and all that. So that's why it was a requirement. So I just nixed the idea and um, I just went on with life, you know, being a secretary, working in an office and all that kind. And then I had, I got married, had my daughter. And once I was on maternity leave, I thought, hey, um, why not? Let me go to school. Um, I really don't want to go back to the office job. And that's basically when I went into um, school for hair and makeup. And I, I'm glad I made that decision. Right, right, and it's something that you really, you really enjoy. Yeah, I, I love yeah. creativeness. Yeah. Nice. And when did you, uh, when did you get bitten by the acting bug? How did that happen? A divorce. <laughs> <laughs> I see. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. You know, sometimes well, the most creative yeah. things come out of the worst times in our lives. Exactly. Um, yeah. You know. Again, I I always loved watching those musicals on TV, the acting and um, just being someone else. And I'd always thought about, you know, thinking of, of modeling, petite modeling, but who knew that you could do that as well? Right. Um, so I just kind of like wiggled my way. It's like, all right, how do I get started on this? Because... Um, <clears throat> when I, after my divorce i just i 
felt like I needed to find something for me. And um, I kind of started doing or finding little things on, on in the newspaper and just eventually found my way into doing community theater. Actually, before that, I found someone who was coming in from New York from the actor's studio. John Ide is his name. And he currently still uh, teaches out in Red Bank, or Eatontown area, area, actually, at ATI. And I went to classes for about a year and a half, and then I felt like I was comfortable enough to start going out there and auditioning at the uh, area community theaters. But how, uh, how old were you? you know, oh, gosh. Um, I think I was about 25 at the time. Ah. So, yeah. She's a baby. So what are um what are some of your favorite films and actors that uh might have had an influence on you back then? You know, I don't know that it was necessarily that anybody had an influence on me. Um I know that I used to love watching Danny Kay. Oh, I love um, Danny Kay. I love yeah. watching Danny Kay. Oh my god. He's so silly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jerry Lewis. Oh, yeah. Um, but I can't say that they're influences. I just loved watching their movies um, right. and all for different reasons as well. A lot of those old movies. Gone yeah. with the Wind, West Side Story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, back in the day, like, I mean, because I'm from the East Coast, too, like, they used to have some really good movies on TV. They really yeah. did, you know, and especially like Channel 13, like they used to show some great black and whites back then. And, um, you know, we grew up watching those as well. So I love I love those movies. Like they're great yeah. memorable films and just really entertaining. And I mean, Jerry Lewis used to just make me laugh like crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> He's another silly one. I think it was all the uh, the facial expressions and the <laughs> The, phys- no, I think yeah. that was the physical comedy, you know, like the tripping, the falling down. The I remember the Nutty Professor, that scene where he's sitting in the chair and he's just sinking into the chair, like, and there's, like, almost no dialogue for a minute. And it's just all, you're just watching him struggle with the chair. It was just... I used to love watching him when I was little. I don't even think I've seen a Jerry Lewis movie since I was, like, five. Oh, wow. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, it's it's been a long time since I've seen a Jerry Lewis movie on TV. It's like they need I to bring that back a little bit. Something about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, you know, I hit him up on Netflix. I'm sorry, what? I was just saying we got to hit him up on Netflix. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, I, but I wish I knew, you know, because when I was watching it, I enjoyed it from a different perspective. And when right. once I started acting, I looked at things differently. And it's like I, I looked at the acting differently, mm-hmm. and I would watch it in a different way, so that I kind of could see and maybe take in what it is that they're doing. Although acting for me has to come from a, a very natural place, trying to invoke some of my memories or things that have happened to me in the past and right. and kind of relate it so that I can find the realism and the naturalism to it. Right. Mm. Exactly. Exactly. Well, of course, what uh, what a lot of us are dying to know, especially some people in chat, how did Clerks come about for you? Well, I was doing the community theater circuit. Mm-hmm. Um, Brian and I had actually worked together at this point already as well. Um Gosh, I'm trying to think how long I was doing the theater circuit before Clerks came around. I would have to say maybe two, maybe three years. Oh, nice, nice. Um, Yeah, uh, no more than four. And um, I was in the middle of doing a show called Same Time Next Year. Uh Uh-huh. I heard about auditions that that they were doing at the First Avenue Playhouse, which um, I think was, well, no, one of the theaters that I kind of started off at. Okay. So after rehearsal, I went to the theater, did my monologue, which was horrendous, by the way. It's like I saw the, the 10th anniversary edition. You know, just, it really wasn't that good. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's like I've done it so much better than that. Um, but, but for Kevin, there was enough emotion in there that he saw something and that he right. really liked. Right. God. 
Uh, and, you know, um, then he called me back. I don't even remember if it was a day or two or not. I don't, I honestly don't remember, but asked me if I, uh, would go down to the convenience store so that I can get the script so that I can read it and see if I felt comfortable with the dialogue. Right. Um, yeah, because you had a yeah. lot to say. <laughs> oh, no, it wasn't so much how much I had to say, but certain yeah, particular how, yeah. things I had to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, because, I mean, that film's become such a cult classic. I mean, I even uh, I have a Berserker T-shirt. And every, every time I got at a comic convention, and every time I wear it out, like there's always, it never fails. There's always somebody that's like, "Hey," <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh my god, that's such awesome. a memorable. Yeah, I know it's just such a memorable film. And I, and I remember I saw it right around when it first came out, and I loved it then. It had such it made such an impression on me because you know it was a local thing, and I was like Jersey, and you know, I was right. really, uh, it was hysterical, which is really funny, and I I loved that they went there. You know, like he didn't, you know, it was like kind of no hold barred and the, you know, the jokes and, you know, right. 37. Yeah. I mean, it was, uh, <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Yeah, you know, it's like once I picked it up, I took it home and I was reading it at work the next day because um, it was a little bit slow in the salon. And um, I was laughing. I, I was really laughing. And it was like, yes, I want to do this. Um, and it was my first opportunity to get to do like really a, a film and with a pretty decent part. So, yeah, yeah I was thrilled to, to do that. And then when he had me, uh, when they were still trying to cast the role of Dante and a couple of the other roles, he had me go over there so that I can actually be a reader and read with whomever they had in mind for the role of Dante. And when I saw Brian, I was I was really happy. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you know, it, it, it's all a really, really great experience. Yeah, because you guys seem to uh, have to have really good chemistry together. You know, yeah. with you. I love that he was uh, painting your nails. I love that that scene. It's so cute. I know, isn't it though? <laughs> yeah, it is. Because I was like, oh, he's a, he's sensitive. <laughs> Although it was not a, com- a comfortable area to sit in, um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I'm sure. I mean, because that, that store probably looks a lot bigger on film than it actually was in real life. Yeah, it, yeah, it was a little cramped, um, oh. so you couldn't quite uh, do that, so that your legs were comfortable. Plus, I, I don't know those plastic mats with the big holes, you know, so that yeah. you, you know the dirt. I was sitting on that; it hurt. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are pretty hard on the, on the feet for sure. Oh, yeah. My goodness. <laughs> yeah, we were uh, we were watching that last week, and I was uh, saying to Nikki that you should have won an Oscar for that film, like oh, that that thank last, you. gee, like that um, when you were uh, that scene where you're like yelling at him. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, after Randall like tells like spills the beans and tells her what's going on. Yeah, like yeah. How, how long did it take you to memorize all that dialogue? It was like a ton. I know. I, I well, yeah, I know. And it, it, it's like the Puerto Rican Italian came yeah. out of you, girl. You were like, oh, hell no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I, about half of because there was so much dialogue. And even though, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much when you, when I get mad, that's, it's actually pretty much how I look and sound and all that kind of stuff. But <laughs> um, we did have to kind of, Split it into two because it was really? so much. Yeah, to, to just kind of spew out there. Yeah, it's great because you you're just like da, 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 da. I'm like oh hell yeah girl like like a Tommy gun she was like bah, 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 bah. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. <laughs> oh man, I mean seriously that's it's a great it's a great film. Um, yeah. Let, here and when did you uh make the transition after that um like what what were you doing in between before you moved out to LA um still doing theater okay um doing as many auditions as I could find um in New York and uh working at the salon still as well <laughs> it's amazing you know how how much people think that your life 
changes and how much money they think you're making. And oh, yeah, I'm sure people were cool. like, oh, like, why aren't you driving around a limousine and all that madness? You're like, really? Yeah, what, are, what are you doing here? What are you, yeah, yeah. Um, maybe not a limousine, but, uh, yeah, they, they, they just really expected that there would be so much more. It's like, oh, you know, this is a low-budget independent movie. I got a little bit of money, and that was it. And, you know, right, right. Um, got a little bit of notoriety, but it's not like it actually did that did anything to put me on the map I you know there was something more that was needed and to be honest too um I think if we all knew about the business a little bit better and knew that you know maybe publicists might have helped uh when the you know when all that when the was getting all the notoriety right you know, you don't know for sure, but I think it might have helped us along um, having somebody on our side who knew the business end of it to kind of push things along. Sure. And we sure. didn't. Yeah, so. because you, you were all so young and, and just, like, literally just starting out, you know. And I mean, it's always like that. Like, if you knew, you know, now what you, you know, reverse it or if you knew then what you know now kind of thing. Exactly. Um, yeah. But even still, I mean, it's um, it's it's a role that obviously you're always going to be remembered for, which is great, yeah, because you know, it, it has such an impact on people. And um, you know, you're you know now that you're you're so busy and doing so many other things, and I think it's uh, it's, it's great that you're, you know, still making yourself known, and you know, you're really loved throughout the community, and uh, you know, people are really excited to uh, see what you're doing. Like people are like, oh wow, like oh my god, I love that movie, and. I remember her, you know, it's nice. Yeah, it is. It actually is. To me, it's kind of a validation of what I did because some, you know, we're our worst critics. Yeah. Um, we, you know, in fact, a lot of the scenes that were cut out of mine, I was actually quite happy that they were cut out because I personally didn't feel that I did as good as I could have on those scenes anyway. Okay. Did you get to watch them? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, because... Some of those scenes were actually in the film when it was shown at the IFFM uh. in New York, and that's where it actually got picked up for Sundance. And so some of those scenes were actually taken out for Sundance. Oh. And um, and then even once it was picked up by Miramax at Sundance, you know, even more little tightening up was done as well. Oh, I'm sure. We all hear about how that goes. <laughs> mm-hmm. The little compromises you have to make. Yes. You're yes. Like, okay. but, uh, yeah, I just see it as a validation, you know, that people actually liked what I did. And, yeah. and so it kind of keeps me, you know, wanting to move on and trying to get some more. And, and in, really, uh, in reality, it's it's what I really love to do. And right. I don't care if it's in front of the camera or behind the camera. I love right. being on set. Yeah, I mean, because you're, you're pretty diversified at this point, you know. I mean, you've done the hair and makeup, you've been in front of it, you've been behind it as a producer as well. You've got all this theater experience. I mean, you know, you have, like, a world of knowledge at this point for, you know, so many other people. And I'm sure it's like, like, I'm a chef and I'm comfortable in any kitchen, you know what I mean? Like, as soon as you get right. on set, it's like your home, you know? Right, right. Yeah, That's I awesome. mean, I've done uh, hair and makeup on sets as well, so... Right. It's- I've almost done it all. It's like, and and even Alien Armageddon, the latest film that I did, um, it was it was a pretty small crew. Uh, so you help out wherever you can. Sure, sure, absolutely. And, uh, you you've been a producer on a few films, right? Um, well, I helped out a friend with a short film of hers, so I kind of helped her with that where wherever she needed some help. Um, I don't know that I could say that I've worn the big producer hat. Um, but you know, when you help out in whatever way you can, it's like, you know, the, the producer bone is kind of thrown your way, which is always good. Mm. Awesome. Alrighty. Well, I think, uh, we're going to take a short little break here and, uh, we're going to hang tight and we will be right back. Captain's log, study two four six eight ten. As I walked by Lieutenant Uhura this evening, the following events transpired. Uhura, that's quite 
an interesting perfume you're wearing. Why, thank you, Captain. It's Stargasm from Planet Houston. That new fragrance by Wicked Potions that's available at Studio3BOnline.com. It's an intoxicating aroma. Almost makes me wish I was a girl. Well, it is a unisex fragrance, Captain. You can wear it, too. You mean Mr. Spunk can wear it? Yes. And boners? Mm-hmm. Mr. Jackoff and Sulu, too? And Sulu, too. Ooh. Attention all personnel, this is Captain Cock of the Starship Inner Thighs. I want you all to do me a favor and try Wicked Potion Stargasm. It'll get your rockets off. Let's try it. Hi there, green alien woman. Oh, Captain, my Captain. I'm going to go powder on my nose. Can you show me where the head is? She's going to blow, Captain. Yes, Mr. Slut, I can see that. Do you mind? Not her, Captain. The ship. It appears the introduction of stargasm into our atmosphere is the precise mixture of elements it takes to create a big bang. That is highly illogical, Mr. Slut. One cannot simply recreate the big. Boners, what's your analysis? We're dead, Jim. Wicked Potions perfumes are not tested on lions, tigers, or bears. Oh, my. Stargasm. From Studio3BOnline.com <laughs> We are back. That was great. That was, that was Jay. <laughs> that was Jay and uh, Jay Fay, who's running our chat room. And I was, I was the you. green alien woman. <laughs> I was like, oh, Cassie. <laughs> that was my big line. <laughs> Good times. <laughs> so crazy. <laughs> Sorry about the sound effects. She's probably like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> the Big Bang was pretty loud. Well, it's supposed to no, be Big Bang. No, it wasn't. You hear me or anything? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so, uh, oh, we'd like to take a moment now to thank the folks at Ghost Tales Television Network for also broadcasting our show every week along with what some other really cool ghosts. <laughs> it's going to be all right, Dad, I promise. Okay, where was I? Um, some other... You were thanking the Ghost Tales Network for broadcasting yes. our show. Broadcasting yeah. our show every week. With uh, along with some other really cool, entertaining paranormal programming, you can find them at ghosttalestv.com. Oh yes, yes, and we'd also like to thank our friends at Get Fanged for embracing us and supporting our shows every week. Uh, Get Fanged is a social network dedicated to supporting and promoting paranormal artists authors, musicians, researchers, as well as witches, vampires, and anyone of the real paranormal persuasion. <laughs> Go get bitten by them at getfanged.com. Thank you very much. <laughs> so I want to talk about another one of my favorite movie genres, sci-fi. Ooh, yeah, I us, love it. <laughs> tell us about the film Alien Armageddon. Well, um, I filmed that about a year and a half ago. Um, Neil Johnston, he's the writer, director, and probably about every other hat as well, because um, he edited it and did a lot of special effects to it and all. Um, but my main role there, you could say, was doing hair and makeup. Okay. <laughs> and... Um, and he asked me, it's like, you know, what do I want to do? Um, it's, and, I, you know, I said definitely both, but I can't do both at the same time. Right. Um, I don't know how directors act 
at the same time because it just there's just so much to think about. Yeah, it just seems like you're constantly having to shift gears, like mentally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it, and and also as far as like when I'm doing hair and makeup on set, I am very conscious of the actors and making sure that they're taken care of and that if the director needs somebody or anybody needs something that I'm supposed to help out with or get or do or change or anything, I'm, I'm, I'm just pretty much aware. And, and also in the fact that I like watching what's going on because I like learning from it, but I need to make sure that things are taken care of. And so I'm making sure that I'm on top of it sometimes even before they even ask for it. Right. So that's where my mind is set. So um, Neil understood that very well, and so he made it a point that my scene, it was just one day, one afternoon, and he would do it in a way so that um, anything that was done that day, the, the other actors were all taken care of, and this way I didn't have to be on set after I did their hair and makeup and got them ready for their scenes so that this way I can get myself ready mentally, emotionally, and stuff, because the scene that I'm doing, it, it's, it's pretty very different from anything that I've done. Um, and it, it, it definitely took a mindset to be in. Um, and uh, I, I really hand it to Kat, uh, who was the lead in that movie, um, because we got together before our scene together and just talked it over. Right. Like what it meant to both of us and what uh, my character was thinking and, 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 and kind of putting our words differently so that we understood each other. And it was, it was, it was really a great experience. Nice. Cool. So would you, uh, would you like to be in more films like this or perhaps a horror movie? I love them both. Sci-fi, horror. I love watching those movies growing up. Um, and there's just something really, really fun about it. I actually did do, a, I would say, more of a psychological thriller mm-hmm. um, about four or five years ago called Dead and Gone. Um, and I get killed in that. And oh, wow. I know. I get like, some special effects <laughs> makeup on there. I get Aww. the cast of my arm. It was, all, it was so cool. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so, horror movies yeah, are I, fun. I, I totally <laughs> love to. What was that? Oh, those kind of, those kind of movies are fun to act in. Yeah, yeah, and and I gotta tell you though too, I would say it's. I mean, they say that comedy is hard, and it is. But to do a horror movie and do it well and not do it over the top, I would say is really hard. Yeah, because I was going to ask you, like, do you, is it easier to, I mean, I don't even know easier, like, how how is it to act scared and not act like you're, you know what I mean? Like, there, there's a line between, like, being frightened, being scared, and then just putting it on too much, you know what I mean? Where you're, you know what I mean? Like, is it is that something really hard to achieve or pull off? It, it is, yeah, because you can you can go over the top so easily or do it very cheesy. Right. And I've seen some cheesy, and it's really bad when it's cheesy. But sometimes <laughs> it's so bad, it's so good. It's good, exactly. Yeah, like then it becomes campy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and you know, of course, it's it's not like anyone's ever died um, to to ex- you know kind of take from that experience and put it into your acting, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> In fact, um, in Dead and Gone, when I am killed and axed, you know, I, I got to tell you, I really thought about it a lot. I'm like, oh, my God, do I do eyes closed, eyes open? Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because like, what, like, yeah, what, what do you do? Like, what would you do instinctually if you were in that situation? Like, do you close your eyes? Do you put your hands over your eyes and have your fingers open so you can see a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there were certain actions that I had to do in the film anyway because I, basically I, I'm going to the lead character and I and he's supposed to have paid me and he did. He gave me a check, but the check bounced. So I came back to to this uh, little cabin that he's staying at and and I'm like basically getting into his face about this check and I'm holding this check and um 
so then he starts asking me, and, and one of the, the hardest lines that I've ever, ever had to say, I could never get it out, even during rehearsal, without cracking up, was, ow. <laughs> <laughs> You're holding a check up to the sky and he's just asked you. <laughs> and that's what you're supposed to say. Ow, yeah. Like, Not like Ow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I you know, so I did it and I'm looking at him and just like with that confused face and then I died and so I actually stayed with my eyes open and then once the scene was done then I cracked up. <laughs> <laughs> now is, is that okay so being like with the eyes open like one of the scenes that always impressed me as a kid was psycho in the shower scene like after she falls out of the the tub and she's on the floor and there's that long camera shot like from her eye mm -hmm. and it's just right. like how difficult is that to not blink because she didn't blink for a long time and in death scenes you oh, know they so totally paused <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for bursting my bubble there. No, but seriously, like, don't you like seriously have to lay there and not blink for like a while? It's not only blinking, breathing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, how how hard is that to just completely be motionless? Like, where do you where do you go? Do you meditate? Is it just you know? You know, and and um. The only way that I can actually describe it, and because this is what I did also um, when I was in a play, and I was playing a blind woman. Right. And you know, and you know, sometimes when you kind of go off into that daydream state, and you're just kind of mm -hmm. off, and you're you really don't blink when you're doing that. Right. Right. So that's kind of like where I take it. Wow. Cause that's something that's always fascinated me. Whenever I see that done on film, I'm like, how do they do that? Like, I, you know, because I, <laughs> I feel like I blink all the time, <laughs> you know. Yeah, like, yeah, and we do, up. and we do. But it's when you when you're kind of laying there, it's basically take everything out of focus, right? So right. that you're not really seeing anything, so that it doesn't distract you. Right, right. What I never got is like, you know. The guy who comes along and finds your body, and then like he he closes your eyes if if they're open. Like what the hell is that? Oh. <laughs> right. Like he doesn't want to see your eyes or something. Don't look at me. <laughs> don't look at me. <laughs> well, you ever don't see those see. paintings where it seems like the eyes are following you? I guess it would. Yeah, I guess. I guess. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I guess so. Or is or is that like I guess to like. um be like some kind of human emotion thing, like, oh, God, rest, rest now. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, honestly, I, I don't know. Um, and I don't know that that was actually, I don't recall it being done in uh, Dead and Gone, after, you know, because I think... They just left her there. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, cut, we're done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I actually had to do that scene quite a few different times, and oh, wow. one of them being on the one of them being on the floor, and then another one had to be done where I, I was actually on a crate, and then had to fall back into someone else's arms. Um, I forget what the reason behind that was, but they needed me up a little bit higher and all that. Oh, because you're so tiny. <laughs> you gotta be careful with that, because that's how Jeff Conway broke his back. Oh, oh wow. really? Oh, because yeah. he got... <laughs> yeah, he was, you know, doing doing that, like, he was supposed to jump back into someone's arms, and uh, the guy was, like, drunk and missed his cue and <laughs> dropped him or, or let let him fall oh. on the stage. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, yeah, just like the um, in The Exorcist with um, Ellen Burstyn, that scene where she gets smacked when uh, Reagan's, like, freaking out and she gets smacked and she gets tossed across the room, I guess the, the director, like, really wanted them to, like, wallop her. So, like, they hit her really hard. And you could see when she falls back, she puts her hand right on her back. Like, she's hurt. Like, he was like, no, like, you're going to toss that girl. You're going to toss her because I want to see, he wanted to see the emotion in her face. And, like, she really hurt her back. <laughs> and, oh, my gosh. Yeah, oh, yeah. I can I've been smacked on stage, and we, you know, I actually, I would get smacked, and then I smash back, and we, we, I mean, we, we tried to do it, but it was 
I mean, we tried to do it so that it wouldn't sting, but, you know, it, it, you almost have to kind of do it in a certain way. Because yeah, how, how do you half slap somebody? <laughs> <laughs> Why can't they just do it in slow motion and then speed up the footage? No, when you're on stage, though, there's, it's, it's, yeah. it's right there in your face. Like, you know, uh, yeah. you know? <laughs> and, and actually, the way to get more noise is to actually cup your hand versus the, the slap. Yeah, I was going to say, is there like a slapping method? <laughs> like, is there like a certain way that you... Uh... Yeah, 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 we found that cupping the hand to a certain degree would lessen the blow a slight bit, but make more noise. No, you should um, do. You should put bubble wrap along your hand, so you know it's soft and it still makes a pop sound. <laughs> oh my God! I wish I wish it was that easy. Oh yeah. Man. Wow, that's that's so intense though. Like how you how you guys as actors put yourselves in those emotional situations like that, and then have to just. It's just part of what you're doing, you know. Like I said, yeah, like well, and a lot of uh, a lot of times it's because we're we are in that emotional state that sometimes it's it, you, you find yourself in in that moment, and then all of a sudden it's like after we, after we're off stage, like in between scenes, it's like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm okay. Yeah, it's like you know, with a so sad. Like, I'm so like, are you, you know? mad? Are you mad? <laughs> Don't forget you saying something. I know. Like, I'll be waiting for you out back. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it also went for a really great moment. Right, right, yeah. Because people, especially, like, when, when you're live on stage and the audience, like, doesn't, they're like, oh, you know, they know, it's like, oh, he hit her. He really hit her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> and, and sometimes it's kind of hard to fake it, too, when you've got the audience that is, is you know, only about three feet away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness gracious, that's crazy. Um, I'm going to backtrack for a second here because um, I had a few people ask me um, over the weekend just just to backtrack the clerks for a minute. They just wanted to know, um, do you still keep in touch with anybody from the film um, in terms of in, in the present day? Like, are you still yeah. with anybody? Or... Yeah, um, the ones that I really... Uh keep in touch with our Brian and also um, Scott Schiaffo, who plays uh, Chuli's Gum Rep. Okay. <laughs> Chuli's guy. <laughs> uh-huh. Chuli. Chuli's Gum. Oh, my God. Goodness. Awesome. All right. Let's see. Where are we at here? Uh, okay. Yes. Yeah, here we go. Let's talk about um, the comic conventions. You've been uh, – kind of jet-setting around the country, making appearances at all these really cool uh, cons lately, uh, like Comic-Con and uh, most recently the Steel City Con in Pittsburgh. Um, those would be a lot of fun and getting to, you know, mingle with the fans and hanging out with your fellow peers. Um, do you have any other appearances coming up that you'd like to tell us about? I do, actually. I have an appearance in Rochester. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that? No, I'm telling everybody to get their pens and papers ready. Oh. <laughs> so um, in September, the 21st to the 23rd, I'll be in Rochester, New York, at the Rochester Sci-Fi Anime Convention. It's called okay. RockCon. Cool. And then um, October is a busy, busy, busy month. Oh, I'm um, sure. <laughs> the first weekend of October... I'll be in Nashville at the National Comic and Horror Festival. The second week of October, I'll be in Sacramento at a Sacramento Horror and Film Festival. Um, that one I can actually drive to, so that'll be yeah. cool. <laughs> nice, little road trip. Uh huh. And then the third weekend of October, I'll be in Tampa Bay in Florida at the Tampa Bay Comic Con. And that's where I really get to have some fun because I'll be extending my stay just before uh, or just after that, actually, and uh, visiting with my family. I can't wait. And then uh, the third weekend, uh, this will be my second appearance at this show. But, um, it's called the GMX uh, Geek Media Expo. I've been there, let's see, I think it was about four or five years ago at their first convention. So it'll be interesting to see what it's actually grown into. Nice. And then to kind of finish off the year, I'll be at Frankenstein's at Nuke the Fridge Con on November 10th. 
Wow. Well, that sounds fun. You're going to be a busy bee. Yes, and that's not even the the the, um, the end of it, really. It's like because uh, there's two more conventions that I have as of right now next year. Nice. Um, yeah, she's already but, talking uh, about next year. Like, that's how busy she is, people. She's in demand. Okay. <laughs> it's quite, quite great. I mean, I don't know if you guys have heard, um, but there is a festival kind of going on right now in in Central Park uh, that will be at the end of the month. And, oh, uh, yeah, for the, um, to show clerks, right? But you have to it's, – it's a voting thing, right? It's a voting thing, yeah, and I'm, not, I'm trying to pull it up here on Facebook now, um, see if I can find the link and the name exactly so that I don't screw it up because <laughs> I do that very well. Um, <laughs> here it is. The Central Park Conservancy Film Festival. And so basically it's from August 21st to the 25th. And so they have their, their films selected except for the 25th where it's a voting uh, – they, they have the public vote between coming to America and Clerks. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, really? <laughs> coming and to America? Just, I thought it's the most awesome thing. So they're going to be showing these movies in Central Park. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's great because Central Park is it's, it's going to be on the Great Lawn, right? I I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's it's I'm, huge. I'm, it's where they have concerts and stuff, and there's like. Literally, you could pack them in. I mean, the thousands. The Great Lawn of no, China. No, it's the Great Lawn in Central Park in New York. Oh. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and it will be rain or shine. Can you imagine yeah. if it rains? Oh, my gosh. That, you know, but that's fun. I've actually done that once. I've, I've seen a movie there where it was raining, and it was actually quite – it didn't. It wasn't a big deal. You know, you just – everyone was prepared for it. You just kind of set up and – it actually wasn't too bad of a thunderstorm either, because sometimes, you know, it gets a little crazy. <laughs> it's like yeah. windy, lightning, everybody's like, hey. Um, but no, that's fun. So people have to vote if they want to see clerks, right? Yes, they have to vote. And actually, I'm looking at it right now. It's like right now the vote is 1381 for clerks and 1126 for coming to America. That's what I'm uh, talking America's about. Really catching up. That's what I'm Need talking about. Vote. Woo! <laughs> Well, of course, because like, everyone's seen Coming to America a zillion times. Why would they want to see that yeah, again? Yeah, and Clerks has the edge because it's a cult movie. Yeah. You know? And that's yeah. what makes it what it is, because it's still, to this day, like it's well-known among certain people, and that's what makes it so special and, and unique. And people are like, oh, I'd love to see Clerks, because it's funny as hell. And movie mm-hmm. is so funny. Oh, that's awesome. So the Central Park, you go to the thecentralparkconservancy.com. Is that the name of it? Um, gosh, it's it's a pretty long, <laughs> it's a pretty long email a- a website address here, wow. but um, it's at abclocal.go.com, and there is a link at the bottom of the page, the Central Park Conservancy uh, Film Festival, so if you click on that, it should take you to the proper site. Nice. Wonderful. Well, we uh, we hope that Clerks is, I mean, it's looking right now as if it's, uh, it's got the edge and it's going to make it. So that would be really, really cool. Can we go to that? <laughs> <laughs> I want to go there. And you know what? I lied because it's like it, it's still an even bigger um, web link than I thought it was. <laughs> it, it just keeps going. It's a paragraph. Well, I actually just okay. tried. I, yeah, I just tried that abclocal.go.com, and it's like, nope, nah, okay, that's not going to take them there. <laughs> the easiest way, it. here's the easiest way. If you friend me on Facebook, <laughs> and it'll be, Mar- just look for me, Marilyn Gigliotti, and I will have the link up on there. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, do you have any uh, upcoming film or television shows in the works that you could discuss with us? Well, I do have a couple of projects kind of in the works. It's more of uh, they're waiting for funding. So I don't even want to say what it is because we know I've how that had, goes, girl. Oh, yeah. I've had at the 11th hour. I mean, actually, it's yeah. more, it was more like the 11th and a half hour. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, I ain't jinxing it. Like, oh, well. I'm not jinxing it. 
<laughs> exactly. Exactly. I call jinx on that. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you. Um, so tell us about Images by Marilyn. Well, um, I've always been interested with photography. And I'd say about four and a half years ago, I decided, oh, heck, I'm going to get myself a digital camera and just kind of started playing with it and teaching myself. And being that I was kind of doing hair and makeup already, um, I, I thought it was a nice transition. It's like, oh, why don't I do headshots? Right. Uh, I, I wanted, I've always looked for a photographer that would kind of do headshots for me in a way that I didn't feel like I was getting stiff in front of the camera. Um, because to me, it's like I was an actress, not a model. Mm-hmm. in my head, and I would be, be put in these poses, and I'm like, this just doesn't feel right. And I, <laughs> I'm, I'm losing whatever character I'm trying to portray because I'm being told, uh, put your arm this way, put move your head that way. Right, way. right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, once I felt comfortable with my camera, um, and then I actually found a place where I can actually... Uh, take classes at a very decent price, I decided to, once I felt comfortable, I'm going to start, I took some friends of mine, I'm like, you know, I have this technique, I want to try, it. it's like, I'll give you headshots for free, let me just kind of see where it goes with this. And so, through trial and error, it's just kind of coming along, and I found a little niche for myself, um, you know, something, again, creative, I really enjoy it, I love taking photographs, and I like being the person's director, not the photographer. And I, I actually have anybody who gets headshots with me to fill out a little form so that I can get an idea of what it is that they uh, uh, submit themselves for, what kind of characters they see themselves as, who they see themselves as, and things like that. And, right. and we'll kind of go through this little routine of just calling out scenes or, you know, whatever it is that they see themselves as, and then I will try to kind of make little scenes about it. Right. Well, that's cool. And you, and it's something you obviously really enjoy doing. And I mean, I've seen a lot of your photographs um, on Facebook and they're really, really nice. Even just like the other shots of like, what's that, that bridge and, and Venice? Is that Venice Beach? Yeah. 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 So those are really nice. I, yeah, I, I I really like doing um, just architectural or just scenic shots. Right. And just finding what it is that's kind of going on out there and and taking a shot of it and and then playing around in Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm still trying to learn how to do that myself. Like I'm kind of a I'm a newbie. <laughs> Uh-huh. You're getting I'm better. I'm trying. I'm trying, man. <laughs> Good man. But yeah, it's it's that those scenes uh, that I took of Venice canals, um, and I just applied. I don't even remember what the, what the uh, technique was that I applied in Photoshop to that. But I was like, oh, that's so cool. It reminds me of like the velvet pictures, you know. Yeah, no, they're the really, day. really pretty. Really pretty. Yeah, and I was gonna say they looked like they were vintage pictures. Like really, really nice. Very, very well done. You're welcome. So could you uh, tell us and our listeners where we can find you these days? Give us your Facebook, Twitter, your website. Let's kind of put it on their face where they can find you. <laughs> well, on Facebook, as I mentioned, you can just look for Marilyn Gigliotti and a friend me. And on Twitter, I don't I really don't Twitter as much as I should, and that's only because I don't have it on my phone because I yeah, have a I mean, lot are you even phone. Are you on Twitter? Are you on Twitter? I am on Twitter, and I am that clerk's girl. <laughs> ah, there you go, that clerk's girl. Well, yeah, I figured it's like that's a, you know, um, because the reason I came up with that handle is people would see me, but they wouldn't expect that it was me. So it's like, you know what you look like? You look like that clerk's girl. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, well, guess what? I am. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't have to say anything. I would just kind of look at them and, you are, oh, wow, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, uh, so Marilyn, 
we uh, uh-huh. were wondering if uh, if uh, you could do a soundbite for us, maybe. Oh, would love to. <laughs> <laughs> would love to. Let me let me whip the whistle. Do it, girl. What you whistle? Okay. <clears throat> so, okay. This is Marilyn Gigliotti, and you're listening to Nikki, Meow, and Jay Luna on the Phantom Zone radio show. Work it. Awesome. You didn't like it, or you want to do another one? Because I thought that was good. You mean I have to do it again? No. <laughs> that was so no, good. No, that- <laughs> I get the one shot take. Okay. No. Um. And you're. <laughs> 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 you like I even did it the first time. Um. Okay. So. And you're. Yeah, that, was, by that, was, that was lucky. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're lucky I even did it at all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. And your images by Marilyn is yeah is a website right. Um, I'm, uh, here's the situation. I had Sorry. mobile me. I had mobile me and they took away mobile me. So I'm trying to get my, because I do have a GoDaddy hosting uh, now and I'm trying to get it synced up with my uh, computer with the iWeb. And right now um, my website for MarilynGigliotti.com is up. I can't get to sync up the other ones, which is my hair right. and makeup and images by Marilyn. Okay. Um, so it's when I actually have a day because it'll probably take a full morning. I gotta yeah, call Go Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I gotta call Go Daddy so that they can help me out with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you all but, you do uh, have a Facebook page though for Images by Marilyn. I do. I do. It's like um, Images by Marilyn on Facebook, and so you can see uh, all the headshot photos and things that I've taken down in Santa Monica, Venice, and just around everywhere. Groovy, groovy. And you have some type of a special going on for your L.A. area people? I do. Well, right now I have anybody like, because I sent out on my contact list. Anybody who's on my contact list, it's basically they get uh, the the heads up for three as a two. So basically they're getting the whole look for free. Nice. And then I'm offering 25% off to anybody else. Nice. Cool. Well, that's a pretty good, I think that's a really good deal. I mean, I know I know I what some of my so. friends have paid for headshots, and it, it ain't like that. <laughs> I'm like, you, I, you know, I think, I think even my regular pricing is pretty good con- comparatively to a lot of the other headshot photographers Yeah, out no, there. It's, it's really competitive. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really, it, but it, your prices are really good because, I mean, some of them just really charge a lot of money for that, you know? Yeah. It's like, wow, you know? And, Especially yeah, when you're I'll struggling, be, it's tough. Yeah. Yeah, and when I was making up the prices, I was making sure to, you know, I was I was looking at it from my perspective of going out there and looking for headshots. So I, I really wanted to make it affordable. Um, and, and, you know, I would look at my photos, and I would be honest with myself critiquing my photos comparatively to other photographers where I was looking at pricing and looking at their websites. And, and I, I think I'm pretty compatible. Yeah, so, absolutely. And as as an actor as well, like how often do you recommend getting new headshots? Like, is that something yeah. that you you would recommend like once a year or like twice a year? You like, know, what 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 do you think? I honestly feel, and sometimes agents will say it's like, oh, you need to do headshots because they're not working. Um, <laughs> Thanks. So, yeah. yeah, I know, right? <laughs> you kind of have to look at it and and really judge it for yourself. Right. In that respect, but I say that if you change your look in any way, you kind of do need to new headshots because sometimes I love casting directors, but and some of them will say they don't have an imagination, you know, where they don't see quite. It's like if you if you have long hair and all of a sudden you cut it short, yeah, you're definitely going to need new new shots. Sure, um, sure. Because I, I mean, at least the one thing that I have going for me when um, with some of the shots that I've used for myself. And I'll go in, and I've had casting directors say, "It's like, oh wow, you look like you're shot. Thank you." <laughs> I, you know, so obviously there's a lot of people still going into the casting sessions and not looking like their photograph. 
Right. So yeah, I was going to say, like, what, what, what is that? You know, how, how is it that they don't, you know, I mean, like people look at them? Because some of them wait 10 years, and they're still using the photos that they used 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> like, honey, you don't look like that girl. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And what what are some of the looks that you like that you recommend for people? Because a lot a lot of my friends have like a lot of different looks. Like some of them have like ten different ones, and or even more than that. And then they have to shave all those pictures down to maybe two or three. Like, what what do you think are like the best shots to uh, to bring to people? It's got to invoke something, especially in the eyes. It's got to say something. Right. That's that's how I feel. Um, and show them, try to pick out the ones that you like the best and what really you feel connected to, and then maybe show them to people who know nothing about the business and what are they're drawn to. Right. And market, <laughs> but because sometimes they really don't know anything about the business, business, but they're drawn to the photo. Right. Um, and then obviously, you know, it's really going to come down to your agent if you have one. Then they'll usually like the one that you don't like. <laughs> yeah, I, I, <laughs> that tends to happen a lot. Like, oh, you know, they pick one that you're. Just oh, uh, what, what do you use for backgrounds? Um, I try not to, you know, um. I try not to have the background too visible. Um, so I try to, to go with a good depth of field um, uh. and try to have areas um, that will kind of do something nice but not draw your attention to it. So I, yeah. I, I actually just kind of walk around and, and see what I like in the background and and then look at the shot, and, and sometimes I'm just walking around in my neighborhood because I, I like natural light. I right. really don't I, – I, I have studio lights, but as far as using them for headshots, I've really not gone there all that much. I mm-hmm. really like the mm-hmm. natural light. Yeah, yeah. So kind of sometimes I'm just walking around and I'm like, oh, that's a great time. This, okay, make note of the time, check the area, and, and this way I know when to go back. Right, right, mm. right. When the when the light is, yeah, because I mean, it it just sets the the tone and the mood for the picture, and you know, brings out brings out the best with the shadows and the light and everything. That's mm-hmm. really cool. Awesome, awesome. Well, you know, Marilyn, we are so thrilled to have you on the show with us, and we thank you so much for being here and spending some time with us. And uh, thank definitely. You. Oh, please. We we look forward to seeing what you have cooking on the stove and more of your awesome photographs and everything else. All these appearances you're making, we're so happy to uh, to know you and to have had you here with us. So thank you for being here. Oh, yes. I'm the Santa Joan. So, uh, Jay, you're welcome. <laughs> so, Jay, tell everybody about our we'll have a fun. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad you had fun. I'm glad you had fun because we're, you know, we're just a couple of silly people, um, getting to getting to talk to some of our favorite people out there. So we're uh, we're very humbled and very blessed, and we thank you very much for uh, agreeing welcome. to be here with us. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. So Jay, who's uh, who's on the show next week? Next, I don't know. Oh. What? <laughs> That's kidding. Okay, so next week we are very excited about this creepy cool cat, Bill Oberst Jr. Ooh. He'll be here with us to spend a chilling night talking about the dark and scary things that go bump in the night. Mm-hmm. He's been That'll in be great. Oh my God, girl. I'm so <laughs> excited about having him on. Oh my yeah, god. I, I met him. I met him actually a, a couple months ago. He's awesome. Yeah, I mean, we were we were really looking forward to this month because we we you know, you just kicked off the the whole month. I was like, Marilyn's going to set it off. <laughs> you know, cuz we've got some really great great actors on the show this month. I'm really uh, excited. Really excited. So what are what are some of the films that he's uh Mr. Oberst is known for? He's been in films like Nuns with Big Guns. <laughs> That was cool. <laughs> and Abraham Lincoln versus Zombie. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the Emmy Award winning horror short and interactive Facebook app, 
take this lollipop. Yes, uh, we highly suggest that if you haven't done it already, um, I think that you should go to takethislollipop.com and try it out for yourselves. It is scary good fun, and that's all I'm going to say about that. But uh, thanks again to Marilyn and uh, to Wicked JFA from Studio3BOnline.com for keeping the party going in the chat room. We will see you meows later. And we have one more song to play before we go. Once again, it's Bon Jovi with It's My Life. <laughs> it's my life. Bye, right, everyone. <laughs> see you Bye. next week. Bye, Marilyn. Thank you so much. Thank you. Blog Talk Radio where millions of hosts and listeners gather. Those musicals on TV, the acting, and um, just being someone else. And I'd always thought about, you know, thinking of, of modeling, petite modeling, but who knew that you could do that as well? Right. Um, so it just kind of, like, wiggled my way. It's like, all right, how do I get started on this? Because um, <clears throat> when I, after my divorce, I just I felt like I needed to find something for me. And um, I kind of started doing or finding little things on, on, in the newspaper and just eventually found my way into doing community theater. Actually, before that, I found someone who was coming in from New York from the actor's studio. John Ide is his name. And he currently still uh, teaches out in Red Bank, or Eatontown area, area, actually, at ATI. And... I went to classes for about a year and a half, and then I felt like I was comfortable enough to start going out there and auditioning at uh, area community theaters. But how, um, how old I were you? you know, oh gosh, um, I think I was about twenty-five at the time. Ah, so, yeah, she's a baby. So, what are um, what are some of your favorite films and actors? that uh, might have had an influence on you back then? You know, I don't know that it was necessarily that anybody had an influence on me. Um, I know that I used to love watching Danny Kaye. Oh, I love um, Danny Kaye. I love yeah. me Danny Kaye. Oh, my God. He's so silly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jerry Lewis. Oh, yeah. Um, but I can't say that they're influences. I just loved watching their movies um, right. and all for different reasons as well. A lot of those old movies, Gone yeah. with the Wind, West Side Story. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, back in the day, like, I mean, because I'm from the East Coast, too, like, they used to have some really good movies on TV. They really yeah. did, you know, and especially, like, Channel 13, like, they used to show some great black and whites back then, and, um, you know, we grew up watching just drop. Wow. And so <laughs> I, I think it kind of left an impression on me because it's something that I really remember. Right. Um, and, you know, it's, even though it wasn't a stage, I think in some degree it gives the same feeling of the stage. Right, right. And how needed your but, teacher to, you know, to go out of her way like that to, uh, yeah, you know, reach out yeah. to you and kind of literally bring you out of your shell and be like, okay, girl. Like, uh-huh. look, you, you gotta, you gotta, you know, take part in this. <laughs> well, my teachers yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's like it's very few teachers that are out there like that right now, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because I mean, what what a good lesson too, because it's like you've got to be a part of life. You can't hide who you are. Right. You know, that's that's really cool. Yeah, that's so. Hmm. Now I can't remember the teacher's name, but she did leave an impression. <laughs> wow, wow, that's great. Um. Yeah, and then the, for me, too, um, I was always drawn to musicals on TV, 
Um, I always wanted to dance the ballet and all that kind of stuff. But uh-huh. growing up, and this is nothing against my parents or anything like that, but growing up, it was, you know, food on the table, clothes on your back, a roof over your head. Exactly. That was it. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, um, I had to wait until I was in my 20s before I can actually go to a dance class. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but but, it, but I always seemed to be of the creative mind because um, I would also like to draw, um but you know, it was never. It was never. Um, what's the word? You know, when it's embraced by the parents and and they kind of, oh, this is good. You should do more or anything like that. Right, um, right, right. So, you know, but and and I didn't know that you can actually make a living off of that, even though it's something that you're watching on TV. Because you know, like I said, liking the musical TV shows and. And watching people do this, I, it's not something that I comprehended to know that I can actually make a career out of that. Right, right. So, but, um, it, yeah, it wasn't until I grew up, um, I, I went to quite a few different, <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> but it's, I don't know, growing up, um, I, you know, I started off as, as uh, very, very shy. So I think if you ask most people who knew me then, if I would ever be in the entertainment business, they'd be like, no way. Wow. Um, I, I didn't even talk when I was in kindergarten. or uh, Yeah, kindergarten. Wow. Um, I, I'd have to say that that was probably my first experience as far as being in front of the crowd and getting some kind of recognition because... I wouldn't, t- the teacher would line us up against uh, the closet so that we can count off, and that's how she did attendance. And um, everybody had an assigned number. And so whenever it came to my number, I would not say a thing. I was too shy. Oh. I wouldn't say. Um, Do you so remember what, what your number was? I don't. Oh, wow. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but one day the teacher kind of took me aside and she says, it's like, you know, you really have to talk in school. It's like, how about if I come to your home, you can show me around or whatever, and and will you talk for me the next day in school? So I was like, okay. So she came over to my house. I was so excited. And most people would probably think that you're, they're in trouble um, when the teacher comes to the house. But yeah, I was excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, she couldn't quite, um, she was quite surprised that I was the same child because I was so excited that I was kind of showing her around and she's like, this is not the same person that's in school. Aww. <laughs> I, I was, you know, just showing her things. I was talkative. I was kind of, you know, a little hyper as most five-year-olds are. Sure. Um and so the next day when I went into school, we lined up and everybody's saying their numbers. I'm, I'm sure I had to have one of the low numbers because um, I'm not remembering for sure, but I think it was by height. And okay. We, we all know that I'm not very tall. So <laughs> it's always been the case. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, once I got to my number, I said my number and every bodies, jaws. Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. Hello there, everyone. Welcome to the Phantom Zone radio show. Oh, yeah. Hey, everybody. Thank you all for being here. And uh, we have the lovely Wicked J. Fay in the chat room waiting to keep you all entertained throughout the show. And, uh, well, I'm from the East Coast originally, and as is our guest for the evening, we are super thrilled to have with us Miss Marilyn Gigliotti. Hey, Marilyn. Hey, how are you guys? Pretty good. How are you? I'm good. Crazy busy day. Oh, I'm sure. And it was I'm a crazy sure. busy week as well. <laughs> That's wonderful, though. We're so glad that uh, you're crazy busy. And thanks for uh, taking the time out to uh, be here with us tonight. Oh, it's my yeah. pleasure. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. Oh, of course, of course. How was your uh, Slurpee? I heard you got a Slurpee before <laughs> <laughs> to prepare for it's, the madness. It's good, but it's nearing the end of the 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 um cup, so it, you know, not much longer. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. I know. I hate when that happens. We, we're like yeah. kind of Slurpee whores, though. Like we love the crap out of Slurpees. It's kind of bad. Uh, I, you know, it's like when it gets really hot out here in LA, it's just the only thing that's just going to do it. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. 
I'm a coke person. What are you? Um, you know, we're we're kind of the suicide slurpy people. We kind of mix the flavors together. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. usually just the the cherry and the the blue. What's the blue one? What is oh, that? I don't know. It's blue. A blue raspberry it's something. Blue. It depends because each each Seven Eleven has different flavors. You know, so it's like yeah. a little, you know, the Coke. I like the soda ones, though. I do like the soda flavors. Those are cool, like when they have, like, the Coke or Mountain Dew or something crazy. But, yay. Well, we're happy that you enjoyed your Slurpee in, in the hot L.A. heat. Oh, my goodness. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for uh, being with us. And yeah. let's see. Uh, there's so much we want to know. I guess we should start at the beginning. Uh, tell okay. us the uh, a bit about your childhood and some of your early influences. Um, gosh, let's see. Well, um, born in New York, raised most of my life in New Jersey. Both my parents are from Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. The schools. Um, and uh, growing up, once I was actually on my own. That after doing the whole oh, nine to five office jobs and. But then I kind of went into hair and makeup, um, right. working in a salon. So that kind of let some of my creative juices out. Um, and then uh, then I found my way to the theater and all that. Yeah, I mean, what um, what got you interested in that particular field of like cosmetology? Like, how did you how did you segue into that? Um, well, when I was in high school, um, I they actually offered it in the high school that I was going to, in Fairfield oh, wow. High School, by the way. Okay. Um, and, uh, but, uh, um, biology was one of the classes that needed to be taken, and frankly, I just didn't want to dissect a frog so that I can learn how to do hair and makeup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the reason it, it was a requirement, though, is because we needed to learn the bones and the muscles and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Because it's, yeah, you know, we, we deal with the skin and the bones and the hair, the head structure and all that. So that's why it was a requirement. So I just nixed the idea and um, I just went on with life, you know, being a secretary, working in an office and all that kind. And then I had, I got married, had my daughter. And once I was on maternity leave, I thought, hey, um, why not? Let me go to school. Um, I really don't want to go back to the office job. And that's basically when I went into um, school for hair and makeup, and I, I'm glad I made that decision. Right, right. And it's something that you really you really enjoy. Yeah, I, I love yeah. creativeness, yeah. Nice. And when did, you, uh, when did you get bitten by the acting bug? How did that happen? A divorce. <laughs> <laughs> I see. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. You know, sometimes the most creative things come out of the worst times in our lives. Exactly. Um, yeah. You know, again, I I always loved watching those.